Hello viewers, welcome to this video. In this video, we will be looking at the November 2020 Science Paper 2, question B2. Question B2 reads, Elena carried out a chromatography experiment to identify components of substance X. Water was used as a solvent. The results of the experiment are shown in the chromatogram below. Elena carried out a chromatography experiment to identify components of substance X. Water was used as a solvent. The results of the experiments are shown in the chromatogram below. So this is a chromatogram. Now, what is a chromatogram? A chromatogram is the final uh, product, the final paper after chromatography has taken place. So it's the filter paper with all the dots or all uh, the results after the experiment has occurred after performing chromatography. So we have our filter paper there, okay? Uh -huh. And what do we have on the filter paper? So we have the substance that is being investigated and it is substance X. Okay, so we want to find out what, uh, okay, so, uh -huh. so we just want, then we have those unknown components. So we've got a non component A, we've got a non component B, and a non component C. So we know the identity of the sub of substance X, and we want to see whether any or all of these unknown components are can actually be uh, identical to X. So how does chromatography work? Chromatography is based on solubility, okay? Chromatography is a separation technique, okay? Used to separate uh, components of a substance with different solubilities. So we need to always understand that chromatography uses solubility to separate various components of a mixture. Now, how does it do that? So depending on how soluble a substance is, uh, that particular substance will move a certain distance from its initial position. So the more soluble a substance is, the further it will move up the chromatogram. Okay? So the more soluble, the longer the distance it covers. The less soluble, the less the distance it will cover. And if a substance is insoluble, that substance will not even move from the initial position. Now, how do we then identify, how do we then identify that eh, these substances eh, are contained in this particular thing? So if two dots, let's take for example, we had another substance here called, uh, let's say, Y. So, sub, uh, so if Y initially was here and after some time Y moves, to that position, okay? If Y was initially there and Y moves to this position, all right? We then look for a dot which is in the same line as Y, okay? So Y has moved from there coming to there, all right? So Y has moved from its initial position coming to there. We now search for we now search for another substance which is in the same line. So we just draw a line. And if we find a dot in that line uh, which, where Y is, then that substance is contained in Y. Or that's, yes, it's contained in Y. So Y may have multiple, may have multiple may form multiple dots let's take for example y also travels okay y also travels and has another dot that is there it means that 
what it will mean is that Y has two different substances that were mixed because on top of that Y, which is the initial position, Y has produced this dot and also this dot, which means it has one and it has two uh, substances. So then Y will have two substances. Then a question may be asked, okay, what two substances were mixed to form Y? So because substance two, substance two is in line with B, okay? Substance two is in line with B. It means B was used to make Y. And substance C also is in line with it, the first dot. It means that C was also used to make it Y. It means that Y contains substance B and substance C. I hope this will help. Even if it has nothing to do with them, uh, the question here, but I think that uh, may help uh, in, in the nearby future. So let's now rub everything we've written on the chromatogram. Okay, that was just a quick intro on chromatograph. So chromatography uses solubility and uh, the higher a substance goes, the more soluble it is. The lesser distance it covers, the, the less soluble it is. If dots are on the same line, then those subs the, uh, the substance is contained. All right, so let's now proceed. Okay, let's proceed to the first question. Okay, let's proceed to the first question. Uh, the first question is, which one of the unknown components A, B, or C is insoluble? Which of the and non components A, B, or C is insoluble in water. So insoluble, what did we say about uh, insoluble? Insoluble substances, meaning that they will not even move from the starting point. So an insoluble substance will be that substance which will not even move from its initial position. So what is the substance that has not even moved from its initial position, the substance is substance A. Substance A has still remained from on the starting line, while substance B and C have actually moved from the starting line. So substance uh, A is insoluble in water. So we are just going to say substance A. So substance A is insoluble in water. Explain your answer is uh, the next. So A has got two parts. It's uh, identifying the substance which is insoluble and giving an explanation. So the explanation here is that substance A has, because substance A has not moved from the starting point. So because It has not moved from the starting point. All right. So there we have for A. So if it, if it was soluble, it would have moved. All right. So. Uh, substance A and substance C. Uh, and the reason is that it's insoluble because it has not moved from the starting point. All right. Uh -huh. Then we go to B. Which of the unknown components was or were not contained in substance X? Which of the unknown components was or were not contained in substance X. So it means that we are looking for a substance whose dot does not uh, fall in the same line as any dots in X. So what we're going to do is we are going to start so substance X. So the first dot 
is in line with it, the dot for B. So this one, B is contained. So B is contained because the line, the dot for X, okay, is in the same line as the dot for B. So uh, B is contained. B is contained. Okay, let's look at it. Uh, a. A, there is no dot also uh, connected or that is in the same line as uh, X. So here on X, there is no dot here. But uh, on A, there is a dot. So A is not contained. So not contained. Okay, we now look for C. C even C, there is a line there and there is no dot under C. So C is also not contained. So we've got two components. We've got A and C. So A and C are not contained in substance X. A and C are not contained in substance X. So A and C are not contained in substance X. So A and C are not contained. So it's A and C. Then we proceed. We proceed to C. C is saying calculate the RF value for component B. Calculate the RF value for component B. So what is RF value? RF value, R, R, R stands for retention, retention, F factor. So RF value is the retention factor value. And the one of the things we should always know about the RF. So RF is written as R and subscript F. So uh, that so the retention factor, okay, the retention factor is always given by the formula uh, distance moved by the dot or by the spot. So distance moved by spot, distance moved by spot, okay. So RF is equal to distance moved by spot over distance moved by solvent distance moved by solvent so that is uh, uh, the formula for calculating the RF value and one of the things that we should take note is that the RF value is always is always less than one the RF value is always less than one because uh, in most cases, the solvent always travels a longer distance than the solute, okay, uh, which is the spot. So the solvent always moves a longer distance compared to the spot. So uh, the denominator is usually bigger than the numerator. All right, so let's get... Uh, uh, let's get to work and calculate the RF value, which is the retention value. So we calculate the RF value, which is the retention value. All right. So let's go back so that we extract the data. So we just clear up. We just clear up the whole chromatogram there. We just clear it up so that uh, we can see better. All right. So uh, the distance moved by the solvent, the distance moved by the solvent 
is 28 centimeters okay from where it started uh, to where it has ended so they're saying the solvent front so the distance of the solvent front to the distance of uh, the solute uh, front so uh, b where is b b is here okay b is here and the distance we've been told that it is 28 now from 28 we have a difference of uh, seven centimeters so what we are looking for is this distance because this was the distance covered and not the seven so uh, b moved from the starting point and uh, raised to where it is which is seven centimeters below the solvent front so how do we find this distance to find the distance moved by 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 b we are going to say uh, 28 minus 7 so 28 minus 7 this is going to give us 21 centimeters 21 centimeters so uh, we have 21 centimeters all right so distance moved by the spot b is 21 centimeters while the distance moved by the solvent is 28 centimeters we now go to the space provided okay and we are now going to say uh, uh, so rf is equal to uh, distance moved by a spot over distance moved by a solvent so distance so this will be equal to 21 centimeters over 28 centimeters so uh, because on the numerator we have centimeters and on the denominator we have centimeters so the centimeters will actually cancel each other the centimeters will cancel each other all right so we have uh, we have 21 divided by 28 so 21 divided by 28 is 0 0.75 0 0.75 so uh, uh, our, this will be equal to 0 0.75 without units because the units have actually cancelled out so 0 0.75 so 0 0.75 is our RF value and that brings us to the end of this question if you like the video don't forget to give it a thumbs up and if you're new to the channel don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification button so that you are notified each and every time we actually have we post a video thank you very much